Welcome, I'm Dave Geckler. I run the networking and security business for Cisco. I'm joined by Steve Martino, Cisco's Chief Information Security Officer. Welcome, Steve. We're here to talk about Cisco's mid-year cybersecurity report. One of the things about Cisco is, Steve, between our organizations, we have a massive investment in security. Yep. So over 5,000 people between building the portfolio, protecting Cisco, our services organization, we just have an incredible investment in security. Part of that is our Talos threat research team. Over 300 people, all they do is threat intel every day, and how do we protect all of our customers from the bad guys that are out there. So today we're going to talk about our research report that we do every six months, looking at all that data, what conclusions we can draw from that. So we work very closely together. Yes. I'm the product guy. You're the guy that protects Cisco. You're my biggest customer. So let's get right into it. Sure. So one of the things we see in the security market right now is ransomware. It's just everywhere. I mean, it's going yeah. after every vertical. It's one of the most prolific forms of attacking that's out there. It, attackers making lots of money. What did the report tell us about ransomware? So a couple of things. Uh, commercial entities are using X as a service to get speed and agility, and the attackers have figured that out as well and are doing the same thing. And we call that malvertising as a service. Essentially, attackers are setting up legitimate ad services and they're using that to inject malware into ads or redirect people to malicious sites. This is fast becoming the number one way that attackers are delivering ransomware. Second thing I think that was re really interesting in the report was the shift in some of the different methods they're using. In last report, Windows binaries was number four on the list. Today it's number one. And I think the reason they're using Windows binaries more and more is to be able to get longevity of their delivery into the platform mm -hmm. and really have that foothold for a long time. Interesting, so Steve, one of the things we want to do as we talk through the mid-year security report yeah. is what are some of the practical things that people out there that run big networks they can do to kind of really help them make some progress against this? And in the whole ransomware space, one of the simple things I think customers can do is they can just add a layer of security from the cloud that'll sure. help them take care of a lot of this ransomware that's going on out there. So that's one of the practical things I think that people can take away yeah. and they can go do. And that's something that you've done for Cisco, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. We just uh, recently deployed open DNS across our entire network and that's giving us that layer where whether people are on the network or off the network to give them that protection. All right, let's move on and talk about some other things sure. from the report. So. One of the things we're always thinking about doing is how do we constrain the space of the attackers, uh -huh. right? So we try and keep as many out as we can, and then it's inevitable that somebody's going to get through, and then the question is how do we find them, and how do we limit their ability yeah. to do damage? So what are some of the other trends we're seeing from the report in the first half of this year for how the attackers are really coming after people and leveraging to get after important data yeah, in, yeah, in infrastructure yeah. that, that guys like you spend all your time <laughs> trying to protect. Yeah, I think another great example is the attack, we've used encryption to protect our communications for a long, long time. Well, the attackers are now pivoting and using encryption to deliver malware in their communications securely, to hide themselves, to conceal. The report indicated that we've seen a 300% increase in the use of HTTPS by uh, malicious actors. So that really is giving them a way of concealing their activities from our services and, and detection mechanisms. Second thing I think that we saw is a shift from just client-side or primarily client-side to server-side delivery of malware. And don't get me wrong, client-side attacks and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, the use of Adobe Flash still super, super uh, prevalent, but they're shifting to using the server as a way of getting at richer, more valuable resources to connect to ransomware and extract more money from individuals and organizations. Okay, so again, some of the more practical things people can do is use their network a little bit to constrain that space yeah. that people can operate. So segment the network, monitor the interior network, kind of figure out, hey, once somebody gets through, like let's, let's constrict their ability to do damage and find them as quickly as possible. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about the attackers. Let's switch to the defenders, yeah. guys like yourself, yeah. right? You do every day. How is it going and what, can, you know, what are we finding in the research of how we're doing on the defending side and things that we can do better and what we can do more of? Yeah, I think what the research found uh, is that 
the defenders aren't necessarily doing a good enough job at what we need to be doing. Specifically, the vendors have stepped up in the time from public disclosure of vulnerabilities to a patch is almost zero. And yet, we as defenders are not aggressively deploying and implementing those patches as aggressively as we can and constraining where attackers can come at us. Good examples of that on the endpoint, if you look at Java, 30% of the browsers that the researchers were able to look at were still running version 6 of the Java runtime when version 10 is the current version that's available. It, we also looked at infrastructure across the network and were able to look at three million different pieces of infrastructure exposed on the public internet. We have to just do a better job of applying these and keeping our infrastructure up to date. It constrains the uh, attackers greatly. I think secondly, you mentioned it, our ability to aggressively develop and deploy network segmentation to limit the horizontal movement of attackers in our networks and really use the network as a giant sensor instrument, the network, get data from the network so that when bad things happen, we're able to find it and constrain it much, much more quickly. Okay, Steve, so some great information and great perspective from somebody that does this every day, trying to go up against the most sophisticated adversaries out there. These are just open doors and open invitation for the adversaries to come through. So as an industry, we need to do better on all that. We need to kind of block as much as we can, realize some stuff's going to get through, find it as quickly as possible, all the techniques it takes to do that. That's one of the things that the mid-year security report talks about a lot is this time to detection, a, a metric we're trying to measure ourselves against. We put it out there a year and a half ago, I think, and it was at 46 hours, and we're, now we're down to 13. That's awesome. And that's where we need to go as an industry, get that time to detection number down, yep. get it off that industry average of 100 to 200 days. Yeah. At least we've got it down into a little hours. over a dozen yeah. hours, and let's drive it lower. All right, Steve, fantastic information. Thanks for joining me here today. All of you out there, go out, download the report, read it. Tremendous amount of information for you to learn all about the cybersecurity market and what's going on in the first half of this year. Thanks for joining us today.